Hey gang, today we're going to use one of the most requested items ever to make canister Damascus with the needle. Uh, this one's for the people. To make sure these tiny pins stand out in our final product, I searched for and found some nickel coated needles that should have bright etching outlines thanks to their nickel plating. Now the manufacturer says this size can be used for tattooing. I don't know much about tattooing, but that'd be pretty cool if it were true. Oh, we got two problems. First off, they're incredibly expensive, so I couldn't afford as many as I'd like for this project. The amount of nickel coated needles seen in this video costs about $150. The second problem is that when you drop them, they're impossible to pick up, even by blacksmithing standards. So if you have to move them around, I just grab them by the fistful and go for it. Let's get a look at our canister now. It's going to be made from this mild steel square tubing with mild steel ends like this, but we have to dress it up. First we coat the inside with titanium dioxide to prevent the billet from sticking to it after welding. Then we line it with paper to eat up all the oxygen inside when we heat it up. And finally, because we don't have a lot of needles, but need to make enough steel to make a knife with, we're going to add two pieces of 1094 and 15 and 20 on opposite sides of our billet. More on that later. First, a big thanks to this video sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends. This game's got a lot of incredible artwork and unique hero characters to collect and equip. It's fun to see what the developers have come up with. Raid has released its biggest ever update, the Doom Tower. It's a giant tower with 120 floors, secret challenge rooms, 12 seriously tough bosses to take on, and it's been a blast to explore. It seems like quite a challenge, but nothing you true adventurers can't handle. Raid also just released a bunch of amazing new champions, and there'll be even more coming this month. And with 500 champions in-game now, trust me when I say there's a champion for everyone. This month's absolutely stacked with special events awesome tournaments and special Valentine's Days happening, there's never been a better time to dive in and get started. So go to the video description, click on the special links to join. Then if you're a new player, simply go to your inbox and you'll get 50,000 silver plus 50 gems, one energy refill, a clan boss key, five mystery shards, a one day XP booster, and a free champion, the executioner. Look at the design on this guy, it's one of the best parts about this game in my opinion. You can find me in the game under the name Green Beetle. There's a lot of super creative artwork and effort that goes into the heroes and champions. This guy's called the Master Butcher, and he has a giant meat tenderizer. I mean, what else do you want? All right, thanks, guys. Now back to our project. We're adding the needles to our canister and trying to pack them down to get a tighter pattern. I would have loved to have just lined up the pins perfectly side by side in the canister and made a build entirely from needles, but it would have cost an arm and a leg, prohibitively expensive. So we're going to have to add 1084 steel powder to fill in the gaps in the canister. The canister is going to be welded shut, and then we'll put it in the forge. All right, the canister's at welding temperature, so it's going in the square dies, and then we're gonna put it in the flat dies. Here you can see the sides of the can puff out, and that's really good news. It means they're not sticking to our billet. As you can see, the canister peeled right off and the end of our billet has been cut off and etched. It looks about like expected with one exception. I would have thought the 1084 powder would have been a bit darker. Perhaps it'll darken up after quenching. Sometimes it does. So I'm going to heat this up and then flatten it before taking it to the surface grinder. While we're smoothing out its surfaces, I sort of need to think about what we're going to do with it. So we need to manipulate it a little more. All right, so I think we have several options now. We can cut it into links and arrange them on end in several different ways, like I'm about to draw out. Then forge weld that together and we'll have something sort of unique. Or I could just twist the bar and then stack it.
It's been decided to cut the bar and arrange them like so. The dark high carbon steel will be on the outside of the knife alternating with layers that have the pins mostly on the outside and this will leave a nice piece of 15 and 20 1095 at the bottom to form our cutting edge. So it's going to look something like this before we grind it. After tacking the bars together I've constructed a canister from scrap laying around the shop. Our billet's going to go inside. Speaking of making a canister, did you guys notice I forgot something? Yep, I forgot the titanium dioxide. So I didn't do a lot of pressing on the sides here. Ooh, but I think I did just enough. This canister may stick, I don't know. Maybe we can chisel it off, we'll see. That's yeah, not looking good. Uh, it's going to have to be ground off. Well, this is what we have when I ground the canister off. We should have this. I should have, you know, this piece rotated from this to this. So I should have this high carbon steel panel here and panel here. And instead, I have... A regular piece here. Now, if you've never seen the channel before, you're asking yourself, well, how did this happen? The rest of you are saying, I'm surprised he made it this far. Despite me drawing lines and everything on the sides of these, I still messed up. I still got the, the placement wrong. What I was going to do is this. I was going to do a ladder where I ground grooves in here on both sides, and that would leave these panels here with uh, empty spots on them. So I'd really just have these stripes of high carbon steel along the sides. And they would have an extra bright layer of nickel on the side. So they'd really be sort of two layers of dark, or three, nickel, dark, nickel. And when you grind at an angle, you know, this is what it looks like from the side. When you uh, sort of forge this to shape, and then you grind it down, then what you would have is you would have, basically looking at the side, you'd have drops or teeth or something, or stalactites or whatever. And again, it'd be nickel on the outside with a high carbon steel center or dark center. And so that was going to be cool, but it's all ruined now. Son of a biscuit. It's okay, Steve. Let it all out. You're in a safe place. Right about now, I had to recenter myself, sort of refocus my chi. So I found some balance in... Cheetos, Pepsi, took in a couple episodes, a little house on the prairie. I feel good. Seems like it's time to press ahead. You know, actually, there's more steel here than I planned, and that's a good thing. It's going to give me a chance to experiment a little bit, check the layout of our final billet, sort of see what's what, see if that laddering works, for example. So I've cut it up, and we're going to make two different blades. The first one is going to be sort of a short integral. Here I'm grinding in grooves for our ladder pattern. They're going to alternate with each other side to side and then they're going to be pressed flat. It's sort of a quick and dirty ladder, but it'll still work.
After some rough grinding, I'm going to sneak this into the ferric chloride and we'll look at our pattern. Yeah, that's pretty cool, but I want a bigger, wider blade to see more of the needles with. So on the second knife, we're going to try to make it a larger blade, a bigger canvas to see that effect on. Here it is, I did not forge it to shape because I wanted to keep some options open. I could still make a handle out of this if I wanted to, or I can cut it off and make a hidden tang, you know, like a kitchen knife or something. The first thing we have to do though is figure out where our edge is. So I took the cap off my ferric chloride here and I've etched the edge to make sure we have a good carbon steel edge right there. And that tells us sort of basically where we, where, what we can do with our uh, geometry. I'm only showing one knife here, but they're both going to be wrapped individually in steel foil, thermal cycled, and then quenched in Parks 50 oil. They're going to be tempered at 390 degrees each, twice for an hour and a half. Yeah, so far so good. Time for some grinding. I love it. You can sort of see the pattern coming out here and it looks really promising, but there's a bit of a problem. Yeah, it's a tiny delamination and it's just not going away. It's in a bad spot. I've decided to try and salvage the knife by putting in a hollow grind or an S-grind. It's so stubborn though, it's just it's really deep. So I think I've got most of it out, but look how far down I had to grind. Can you see how much I took out of that? So I'm going to have to surface grind or grind flat the rest of this to, to bring this in line. It's going to get pretty skinny. I don't even really know if I want to hollow grind the other side too. I mean, it's, I guess I have to, sort of, I don't Sheesh. It's going to get pretty thin, y'all. I don't know. It's a pretty desperate salvage attempt at this point, but I tried. At any rate, I got a warp. While I was grinding, I just, I took off too much material. You know, it's just, it was too ambitious after heat treat and it basically is, turned. So I don't think I can get that out. I mean, I can try, but I'm going to be chasing it back and forth. The, the edge is so thin already. I have no real options to grind this straight. Yeah, it's a bust, but we are going to go ahead and polish it up and get a look at it and just see what the pattern is like on a bigger blade. I sort of like that. It looks pretty good. It reminds me of the fish hook knife a little bit. If I do it again, I think I'd use bigger pins. Anyway, we still have the first knife. Let's get it sanded up and we'll put a bacote handle on it.
Well, I like it. What do you guys think? Nothing goes as planned around here. I'm just a clown, just doing my thing in my clown shoes. I hope everyone's entertained. Good old Steve. Uh, 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 uh.